the former CEO of Salomon Brothers, and the man who was hailed the King of Wall Street. Well, John Goodfreund joins me now from New York. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, before we get on to the macro issues uh, that have happened in the last three years and beyond, I'd just like to ask you about the, the rogue trader. I mean, these things are always going to happen, but are you surprised that after all the regulation that's been put in place that there wasn't a better system that would not stop somebody having an unauthorized two billion dollar loss i'm not particularly surprised uh, <clears throat> there's always room for a clever person to game the system uh, the controls over the years have been diminished radically I suppose with the ending of Glass-Steagall in 1999, <coughs> the banks uh, were unbound, and when they're unbound, they will roam free. When banking, banker bashing is still very much in vogue, uh, what kind of message does a loss like this and a rogue trader indeed send to the wider world about the banking community? I think your sense of uh, trust is only unduly influenced by your sense of greed. Uh, I think anybody who trusts people they don't know with very large sums are foolish. And how much damage does this do? to UBS as a bank above and beyond the, the obvious uh, $2 billion loss? Uh, not a lot. The next uh, chance to write a good trade, a good ticket, uh, will occur. UBS is a solid institution in terms of their financial capabilities. Uh, it wouldn't help them or the system to see them unduly damaged. <coughs> Unfortunately, uh, the system is dominated by the weak sisters of UBS is not one. If we look at uh, the way that the banking system has changed uh, since that uh, event three years ago to the day when Lehman Brothers failed. How far have we progressed since then and, and how far do we have to go? We've progressed very little. The uh, Federal Reserve or the central banks uh, have bailed out the commercial banks from their ineptitude, their greed. I don't see many of the senior official them being dislocated or fired. I think the system is extremely corrupt. It's been that way for years. The division of responsibility from commercial banks to brokerage firms uh, has increased. Commercial banks are now able to do whatever they please. Brokerage firms are now generally owned by the public. So the public takes the hits. Uh, the employees seem to do very well. If you check the numbers for the last few years, you'll find that <coughs> the financial institutions pay very well. How important is it uh, that whatever regulations do come in are applied across the board? For example, in the UK, we've had the uh, Vickers report, which suggests that... Uh, that UK retail banks should be ring-fenced and indeed that the level of capitalization should be increased in UK banks. Um, that would mean, of course, that they were on a different playing field from elsewhere in uh, Europe and the US. Uh, I think it's a rational move whether there will be enough loopholes, enough air, that the British banks can do what they darn please still would not surprise me. Um, how much more how, do you think that there is enough political will to do what it takes to actually solve the banking system? And, and although it's a very big question, can I ask you what what are the main steps that no, we need to be taking? No, ideologically, ideologically, people are still enamoured of 
of the Friedman view of free markets, uh, Greenspan's view of helping the markets. I think that uh, they need discipline and they ought to pay for their mistakes. And just before we go, what is the, the biggest threat to the banks at the moment? Is it the Eurozone crisis? Yeah, that's the biggest temporal threat. I think we'll overcome it this time, but it'll be tested again and again. I don't see the Greeks changing their habits overnight.